What you're going to see will change everything that you thought happened in UFC 300. Boom. Look at it right over here. It's, it's, it's right underneath the arm. That's a clean shot. This is the third time a referee was involved in an Alex Pereira victory. I'm going to say it. Alex Pereira is massively overrated. Chama. This video is definitely going to trigger a lot of you hardcore Alex Pereira fans out there. I ask you to look at this vid with an open mind because I'm about to show you stuff that may question Alex Pereira and his credibility. This right here is a supporter of our show. His name is Sinosi, and he's been an OG of the channel for many years. In fact, he let DDP take a picture with him and his belt. He's a good man. With that being said, Sinosi has inspired me to make this video. Do not give Sinosi any heat for waking the dragon. I was not going to be making this video, but because of this post, here I am. Hill resume was never that good, and he skipped the UFC line fighting old Glover. He was always a scrub. I don't know why so many put stock on him beating Alex, especially on the feet. Change my mind if he can beat someone in the top five. I decided to put on my fancy wife beater to make this video for you guys, so enjoy the content. By the way, shout out to my bookie. The promo code is MMAHOLES for a 10% match on your first deposit. Yes, you can question Jamal Hill at 12 2 0, the former champion who just got knocked out at UFC 300. In 2019, Jamal Hill won by Mount in the second round of the Contender Series against Alexander Popek. Who the fuck is that guy? Followed up in that debut, beating Darko Stosik, Ovin's St. Pru. Lost to Paul Craig with that freak injury. Jimmy Crute, the right hook in the first round win. Johnny Walker, first round win, overhand right. Thiago Santos, the ground and pound in round number four. Three finishes in a row. And you could make arguments about those guys. You know, Johnny Walker, he was kind of an overhyped a prospect. Still very dangerous, but overhyped. Jimmy Crute. Diago Santos used to be pretty dangerous. Finished a guy that John Jones couldn't. A war with the champion Glover Teixeira. A lot of people discredit it because of Glover's age and said if Glover was younger, it would have went differently. Regardless, got a unanimous decision over a guy that's very, very tough. Then the injury happens. Then fast forward to Alex Pereira, where he gets knocked out in the first round. You can say there are a lot of unanswered questions, but calling him overrated, I think is still a little premature. Do you have a right to say that? Well, maybe. You also have a right to say that about Alex Pereira. Now, before I get to the Alex Pereira being overrated, let's just look at something that was absolutely hilarious and probably one of the best walkouts and walkout responses ever in UFC history. This was at UFC 300, Alex Pereira stomping and getting ready to shoot the arrow and watch Jamal Hill's response to this. Alex Pereira stops. Jamal Hill is waiting by the cage door. Alex Pereira is staring Jamal in the eyes. Jamal is staring back. I don't know what the hell the hell Jamal is doing over there. I have no idea. Alex Pereira has the coldest walkout in UFC history. I understand why people love this guy. And as he's pulling that arrow, he looks his prey in the eye and screams. And there's Jamal Hill. Staring at Alex Pereira, and he's looking him in the eye. He grabs the arrow, holds it in two hands, and then snaps it over his knee. What a moment by both guys. The theatrics of the UFC. You got to love it. Now back to Potan. We're talking overrated. When you talk about one fighter, I got to still look at the other fighter as well. When he arrives to the UFC, he fights Andreas Michalides, a 16-7-0 UFC fighter. Who the fuck is that guy? Hey, it's his debut. Leave him alone. Then Bruno Silva, who was a hyped-up prospect that never really panned out. He then fights Sean Strickland. What a path to the title. Am I upset? No. As a fan, I wanted to see the guy that 
was the Izzy Slayer. He knocks out Sean in the first round, which is impressive. Sean's got very good defense. But is Sean elite? I mean, he was a champion, yes. He took care of Israel Adesanya. He dominated Izzy. But let's be serious here, guys. Is Sean Strickland, who is a big fan favorite, I'm a big fan of Sean, is Sean really elite? Regardless, that's the biggest name in his path for gold. And then when he gets there, he meets Israel Adesanya once again and gets the job done. I believed in real time that this was stopped fairly decent. But in a rewatch, Mark Goddard steps in in the fifth round, waves off the fight when Izzy thought that he still was in the game. If Izzy was able to survive that flurry in the fifth round, his hand would have been raised and Alex Pereira would have taken his first UFC loss. But this is important. Mark Goddard stepped in, some say very early, to stop the fight. Mark Goddard has been criticized over and over and over again about stopping fights early. It's part of the game. It happens. Sometimes there's bad judging. Sometimes a ref steps in a little early or even stops a fight too late. But regardless, these things are part of the game. And Alex Pereira was on the better side of it. Let me know in the comment section down below if you think this was a good or bad stop. Now we move to the second fight in the UFC against Israel Adesanya. Pereira coming in with a flurry. Israel weathers the storm. And then an iconic moment of Israel Adesanya standing over Pereira's corpse. I want you guys to think about this. Israel Adesanya goes on and loses to Sean Strickland. Sean Strickland, like I said before, a solid UFC fighter, a fan favorite. But is he one of the greatest of all time? No. In a rematch, can Izzy get that one back? Possibly. But here's the man who just knocked out Jamal Hill. A man that is not overrated. The Alex Pereira story is not even close to being over. And it's still being written. Let's move on. After the fight against Israel Adesanya and getting knocked out violently, Alex Pereira finds himself a weight class higher and hunt for another belt. The first fight is Jan Blahovic. This fight went to a split decision, and I have to be honest with you, I think they got it wrong. You could make a strong argument either way on who won this fight, but regardless, I don't think they got this one right. We move on. Alex Pereira finds himself against Yuri Prohaska. Yuri Prohaska at UFC 300 had a fantastical performance against Alexander Rakic. This whole scenario is weird because you have the light heavyweight belt going from waist to waist. Injuries are happening. We don't know who's the champ, who's not the champ, but Prohaska and Alex Pereira fight for this belt at UFC 295 on New Year's Eve in 2023. Yuri Prohaska is sniffing on the jock, trying to get a takedown, working. Alex Pereira is drilling in elbows. He falls forward. Mark Goddard steps in and stops the fight prematurely. Mark Goddard, once again, steps in and there's a debatable stoppage. Now, I am fine with people on one side of the stoppage, people on the other side of the stoppage, but let me make this very clear. Debatable. Two times in Alex Pereira's run over here, Mark Goddard is involved, and we have fans yelling and screaming about the legitimacy of the stoppage. You may like the stoppages, you may not like the stoppages, but there is no question that we're still all arguing and debating these stoppages. If you noticed on UFC 300, Mark Goddard was not the ref for the title fights. Alex Pereira becomes a champion now of two weight classes, not simultaneous, but after the loss to Israel Adesanya, Alex Pereira finds himself champ again. Think about that run. The UFC does a fantastic job of putting the right people in the right place against the right opponents. They've done this with many superstars. Israel Adesanya had the luxury of this. Conor McGregor's had the luxury of this. Alex Pereira has had the luxury of this. And I'm fine with it, man. As a fan, I enjoy a good superstar. And when you got a guy like Alex Pereira, he's so much fun to root for. The walkout inside the cage, what he can do on social media, how funny he is. He's a super likable guy. And I'm not here to hate on Alex Pereira. All I'm here to do is just show you the facts. So here we are, Alex Pereira is your light heavyweight champion, Jamal Hill is coming off a leg injury, and they both get invited to be the headlining fight of UFC 300. Big shout out to UFC Alien for putting this together because Jamal Hill, a lot of people started not liking him anymore because of the trash talk that was happening in the lead up to the fight. I understand you gotta sell a fight, but Jamal Hill clearly lost a bunch of fans. And whenever I do fight him, standing, I will knock him out. And when I do, 
I'm going to rub it in every single one of y'all face. It down, take a picture. I don't give a fuck. We getting it in. When you step in there with me, ain't nothing to talk about. Ain't nothing to say. It's all right here and I'm on your ass. I have to put a severe ass whooping on him. Uh, you know, just uh, just getting acquainted with the visual that I plan on seeing on Saturday night. You're listening to the booze. This man is talking a lot of smack. If you're going to talk that smack, you better back it up. When I come through, you going to feel me. I've seen that he's not on my level. I've seen he's not on my level. It's not close, and I can't wait to get in there tomorrow and show that. Now, here is another reason why I'm putting this video together. It's a very important piece to the puzzle. What you're going to see will change everything that you thought happened in UFC 300. Did you hear that? That was the sound of a leg flying in towards the body of Alex Pereira and hitting the cup. Pretty loud, right? Damn, man, that must hurt if you get hit on the cup and it sounds like that, right? Wait a second. As you look and watch this thing go in slow motion, the foot comes in. And look where the foot lands. Watch it right here. The foot is coming in. Beautiful shorts, Alex Pereira. If you can watch the shot come in in slow motion, boom. That is over the waistband. Look at it right over here. It's, it's, it's right underneath the arm. Tries to come down to block it. That's a clean shot. Listen to Herb Dean. Stop. Herb Dean says stop, and Alex Pereira puts his hand out. Now, in real time, that was one of the coldest moments ever. Alex never unlocks the eyes. He moves in and then destroys Jamal Hill. But in a rewatch and seeing from this angle, hearing how loud the shot hit and knowing it did not hit the cup, that was a clean ass shot. Stop. Herb Dean has been pretty decent lately as a referee. And I'm not complaining about Herb Dean stepping in over there. You know, he's just making sure it wasn't a low blow. I get it. But I will say this. This is what led to the knockout. Just a slight distraction can change the whole momentum of something. Right after that, Herb Dean step in. Trauma. Is able to land the signature left hand. Putting Jamal Hill down to the ground. And then following it up with the violent ground and pound. This is the third time a referee was involved in an Alex Pereira victory. The third time. Two Mark Goddards, one Herb Dean. Everything seems to go right for this guy. It's kind of crazy. Now, I'm not discrediting the knockout here. What I'm trying to tell you is if Herb Dean did not step in in that moment, would it have happened? We can literally debate this. Alex Pereira stops Herb, keeps walking forward. Jamal Hill turns around and then boom, gets popped. I mean, it's right after the ref steps in. Alex Pereira's celebration was probably one of the funniest celebrations ever. I have never seen anything like it, and I laughed so freaking hard. I'm still laughing at this. Alex Pereira is hilarious. This video is not an Alex Pereira slander piece. I am a legit fan of the guy, but I'm also the guy that has to bring you the facts and bring you the other perspective. Alex Pereira could be massively overrated. Sometimes the UFC uses smoke and mirrors to make us believe someone is better than they really are. 